Kai from 40 by 3 b here and today I'll be talking about screw joints. So usually when you're making something, when you're making a joint or something with moving parts, the first thing people probably think of is shaft. Now unfortunately, VEX shafts are pretty horrible at a lot of things and one of them is being joints. So as you can see over here, this let's imagine that this thing can be extended off to be like a lift. Now you can see this, this thing is pretty bad. There's a lot of slop and free space that can move around and overall just not strong at all. Now let's quickly dissect and figure out why this is. So the first reason would be actually that the only way you can constrain a shaft, something on the shaft in VEX is through collars. Now unfortunately, you, there's really no way to perfectly lock a collar in. Either that you're, it's going to be too loose, it can move around, or it's too tight, I can barely spin at all. And the second problem is actually that the VEX bearings are already just slightly larger than the shaft. So no matter how tight you are, there's always going to be free space for the, there's always going to be some free space for the bearing to wobble in. So it can naturally just not be really that good. Now the solution to this is going to be using what's called screw joints, or quite literally joints made of screws. So the rationale behind this is that firstly, the screw is pretty obviously round and it actually fits, and say it's round, it actually fits a lot better within a bearing. As you can see over here, there's just a lot that's wobbling in general and therefore you're able to have a joint with less slop. And it will be, also the other benefit is that on a screw, you can be able to use a, you can basically, you can screw nuts onto it. And what this means is that firstly, I can be able to use a caps nut to lock the sh to lock uh, to lock the screw down, and this means that my screw cannot just physically shift at all, and that will help with slots from over here. So the shaft itself cannot wobble. And now the second thing is that I can be able to use a nylon lock over here and just tighten it anywhere, and this means that I can have anything that is rotating on here constrain it down and it will have really little wiggle room while not being too tight because physically I can place the nylock anywhere and it will be tight. This, th this idea of using a deadbolt here can actually also be extended. For example, I've seen teams use rounded standoffs as, as their joints since that they're, since that they're a lot thicker they're going to be a lot stronger. But essentially this is, this is basically the, the basic idea between, within how a screw joint works. So you start off with having, you, you'll need two pieces. This here is the anchor piece. So essentially, this is called the anchor because the screw is screwed on here and anchored. And then you want your rotary piece. In this case, I'll be using a C channel to, rip, to demonstrate. But it can be really anything as long as it spins around in the screw. As you can see over here, it spins smoothly over here. But it can also be something like a sprocket that spins around here. It goes. Really anything goes. So to build this, you'll first want to put your you'll first want to anchor your screw. So to do this, just grab your screw of a desired length, and then you want to grab a cap nut. You'll then want to basically just hide in the screw against your C-channel. Now I do want to notice that I put a bearing here with the purpose to center the screw, but let's say that you have something similar to a screw joint, then you can really, you don't actually need the bearing over here, you can just put it through. And as you can see, the screw would auto-center itself. And similarly, the setup you don't have either, and you really need, and you cannot use a bearing, you can also just make sure that every screw is centered onto one of the corners. Next, simply just tighten this cap nut. And now at the end, you'll see that the screw is not able to rotate. Then simply just bring your rotary piece. I'll be using the C channel over here. And then, firstly, if you want to add any spacing across on your joints, just add it over here, however much you want. And before we put the thing in, put a washer so that metal wouldn't be grinding against each other. Then simply grab your nylon, and then you'll want to screw it in. Now, since that the screw is completely constrained by this cap set over here, you'll want to just use a wrench to tighten it up. You'll want to tighten it up until, as you can see, this here is now tight. And you'll want to now start loosening this joint. You'll want to go by probably like, honestly, one eighth of a rotation. As you see, it's getting looser. Make it a bit looser. Getting there. 
you want it to start tuning, you want to just basic, basically make it decently smooth. Uh, just loosen the nylock slightly. Then just put your wrench in here. And then loosen, you want to loosen the cabinet slightly. So as you can see, now that the cabinet is loose, you can now rotate the screw slightly. And then basically just put your wrench here and just start loosening. Now that the capstan isn't tight, it is no longer constraining the screw itself, so you can simply, you can freely just unscrew it. There, and as you can see, the screw joint is now taken apart. So earlier on, we only placed this one bearing in the C-channel, and then we want to basically place this thing in. Now what you'll notice is that there's, this is, there's actually a limit to how strong it is, like no, no matter how tight it is, there's always going to be some kind of slop. Now I'll tell you how to actually remove Let's say that you're doing, you're doing something like a really heavy duty lift, lift then you'll probably want to do some way to have some way to strengthen your screw joint. So really, the principle of solving this problem is basically extending the contact, like how much how much contact the screw would have with the rotary joint. So for example, if you make it longer, then now that there's less space for it to wobble, that's going to be naturally stronger. So one really easy way to do this is by using is by double is by stacking bearings using C channel couplers. So to do this, simply put your screw through. Where you want to put it first. Then you'll basically want to reverse the assembly using um, a C-channel coupler. So just do this, then put a coupler in. Then you'll want to screw it in. You'll notice that the coupler actually is actually spaced outside slightly because the because the bearings are actually something thicker, but that's okay. Just simply just do it. Oops. Oh, that one actually. And you'll want to just screw it in. That was actually bad. bad that was actually bad, bad demonstration over there. Uh, I'll recommend getting both decently tight and tighten them both together, so you can make sure that the bearings are balanced. Now you can see. Now basically, the contact area has been have doubled from just one bearing to two bearings, and as you can see. There's really just there's significantly less wobble that's with, that's existing within the assembly. You can actually even go further than what I demonstrated earlier. For example, let's say you're building like a really heavy duty chain bar lift, and you want to make sure there's absolutely no wobble as possible. Let's say that your lift is constrained over here, you can actually just essentially just space out the bearings like this, and then make it so that the entire thing is fully constrained like this. And as you can see, there's just really, really minimal slop at all. All the earlier screw joints I talked about, it still is cantilevered, meaning it's only supported on one side. This this means that no matter how strong your, it means that no, this means that no matter how strong your screw joint is, on this side, on the rotating side, your screw string, the, the entire string is still dictated by how strong this piece of plate is. Well, you can strengthen this by, for example, adding, by for example, adding a coupler and then extending this, con extending this connection here. Really, the best way to have a strong screw joint possible is still make sure that it's supported on both sides. So here I'll give you a quick couple of variants on how you can be able to support this on both sides. The easiest way of course is going to be just have a, have a bearing on the other side. So over here I'll imagine that there's a full screw joint in between here and basically just have the screw just have the screw rest in here and now you can see that your screws are supported pretty, pretty clearly by the bearing. The advantage with this is just honestly really easy to build. But there is also disadvantage, and also the screws are, are the screws are going to be centered on both sides. Now the disadvantage over here is that, as you can see, the screw joint is actually just lying here. There's no like support or anything. So let's say that I have a lot of screw joints here, it's possible to still sway slightly. Another way to do a doubly supported screw joint is by basically simply putting a cap nut over here. So I'll just quickly demonstrate the build process. When building, when building a screw joint with a really long bolt, I recommend just screwing, do not tighten the thing first and then just screw them all in at the same time. Because otherwise you'll have a really bad time tightening in all the, all the, all the nylock nuts. So just put it through, and through, and through. And just wait until your screw is almost in. Then once you're at the point that it's about to be fully screwed in, you'll want to switch you switch to tightening the cap nut first. Now this will fully lock the bolt, and now you'll want to just tune the nylon. Now I'll go ahead and just omit this just for just to be brief, but essentially now you'll want to get another cap nut on the other side, screw it in, 
And now you have basically two captains that are clapping against each other. Grab two wrenches, wrench both, wrench both caps nut. Wrench both cap nuts. And then you'll want to tighten. Tighten them against each other so that they're tight. There you go. Then now, as you can see over here, the two cabinets are clamping against the C channel. So now that they're actually, so now that there, there's a, there's support on this side, and there's also support on this side from the from the shoulder itself. So now the screw joint is not fully constrained. And the advantage of this is that since that there's two cabinets clamping against each other, this is basically acting act kind of like a stopper. So this thing cannot move. So now that basically the two C channel sides are fully constrained. But let's say you're doing a drivetrain and you can you don't really have a lot of space to put to screw in your two C channels. Then you can basically use the screw joint as a, pack, as, as a way to add support. The third way of ha having a screw joint be constrained on both sides is by using standoffs. So first you want to just build a normal screw joint like this. Then you'll want to grab a standoff. So the standoff should be preferably as long as this as, pos as possible, but I'm just using a half inch here for demonstration. You'll want to just put the standoff through and screw it into the thread. And also, yeah, just, yep, so make sure that there is some thread behind your nylon, so there's some way here. Then just do this. Just tighten it slightly. Then you'll want to just basically screw it in on this side. As you can see, now you have a screw joint. Oops, let me. This gotta be loosened. There. You now have a screw joint. Just... There. You now have a screw joint that's supported on both sides and it's held together. So, the advantage of this design is that for the previous two designs, your screw has to be physically long enough to pass through both C channels. However, this is not always the case. For example, if you have two C channels that may be placed over here, then you can't really use the first two method. So in this case, you can basically use a standoff and artificially extend your screw joint off the however long you want. So let's say that I want to, I want to have a screw, screw joint supported across the robot, just use this method.